Dom from Battlecross, and you're listening to The Circle Pit. Let's start with the obvious. How's the tour going so far? Tour's great. Hot, sweaty, lots of dudes kicking each other's ass in the pit. Can't complain. Brutal. <laughs> so what's the funniest thing that's happened to you on tour so far? The funniest thing was, the well, the first day of tour. It wasn't even the first day of tour. It was a pre-production day. Apparently, I got blackout drunk. I had to have at least five people explain my evening to me. I was serving people in arm wrestling. Oh, damn. Sounds and like I'm not times. I'm not a big guy, but apparently I was arm wrestling Heidi from uh, Butcher Babies, and she had to actually put all her weight down. I'm like, uh, I'm drunk. You came out on top there. Yeah. But as far as my fun, I, I still get people come up to me like, damn, I can't remember that. I, I still can't believe you were like that that first day. Thankfully, I'm a jolly drunk, not a, not a mean drunk. There you go. Any more experiences like that? Nope. Nope. <laughs> nope. I, I, yeah. Nope. I had my one and done. I mean, I'll, I'll get tipsy. We have, we have mixers all the time that usually precede a day off just so we can go out and have some fun. But I'll, you know, I'll partake, but I'm not, I won't black out. I, I like to remember getting into my bunk and going to sleep, not, not waking up. Like, what happened? How did I get here? It's not a good feeling. No, it's not. Well, I guess an appropriate question would be, what is your favorite alcohol? Pick your poison. Beer. Beer. It's good old beer. I mean, I usually swear by PBR. Most people laugh at me for that. I, mean, I like my Millers and Buds and all that. I like good craft beers as well. But when it comes to saving space on the rider for tour, case of PBR, beer, dude. Keeps you company. I, I can judge beer. I can't judge liquor. <laughs> you guys just came out the new album not too long ago. Can you tell us a bit about what it's going into making? Yeah, War of Will, man. I mean, that, that came into... Well, it was kind of rushed, kind of not. We only had so much time in between uh, the December tour we did and going out. We had, we had about a month and a half to two months to really write the whole album. Just to nose to the grindstone, do what we can. We had a couple songs written prior, but we really just, as soon as we got home, said, we have to write an album right now. And we just did it, you know, we sit at home, and I'd sit there, write some bass licks, put on the computer or some guitar licks, send it over to guitar, you know, either Tony or Huron, say, hey, listen to this, Skeleton had something, Tony would listen to it, I'd chill the practice, say, hey, love it, here's why I wrote around it. Cool. Trim the fat, throw it on the wall, see what sticks, get him shit done. That's it, man. Sounds like so really Awesome. Very good, dude. I mean, everyone just, we've heard of the sophomore slump, a lot of bands go through, you know, they, the second album is just like, man. We, we had something to prove on this one. Yeah. Like, no, we don't want a sophomore slump. We want a sophomore strike. We want to come out and like kick some ass. And thankfully, having the guys at Audio Hammer, very chill, very relaxed. And they really made the best come out of us by not really just stressing, saying, hey, you know, I knocked out five songs in one day. He, the guy recording us, he yeah, was just like, nice. All right, do some more tomorrow? Sure, okay. It works. <laughs> Hell yeah. So do you got any favorite tracks? My favorite. I love uh, going in order. I love uh, Flesh and Bone because I get, I get to show off a little bit more on that one. But uh, my favorite track on the album is number six, Ghost Alive, because I wrote that. That was one of the ones that we had written before. We had that crunch time. Plus, uh, Kyle, he's, he told me, he's like, dude, I want you to write lyrics for this song. So I have a lot invested in that song. I wrote it about an old buddy of mine who uh, served in Iraq and he served some uh, post-traumatic stress and just wrote it about him dude, about being an empty shell but kicking as much ass and just living through the nightmare and trying to live. Yeah, do. And then another good classic one, I, I love Beast, I'm sorry, I just, Beast, that one is just pure, just death, brutal, just makes you want to drive fast. <laughs> you can't drive the speed limit while listening to that. No, not possible. Not at all. Do you have any favorite songs to play live? Playing live, I love to play Man of Stone off the Pursuit of Honor. That, that song, it's just such a fun, energetic song to play. Uh, I love that we're doing Force Fed and Flesh and Bone off the new album. I'm really hoping we can come out with uh, Never Coming Back. We 
just did a music video for that one. I really hope we're able to start sliding that one into the set list soon. Because I love playing that song. It, it's only two and a half minutes. It, it actually harkens back to my punk days. I just want to just write a quick thrash. Or just like, I want pure energy. Let's go. Sounds like a good time. Yeah. Great time. Well, we got a couple of questions to ask from the followers. What is the meaning of life? What is the meaning of life? Oh, God. I just brain farted, you know? Well, damn. The meaning of life is Monty Python. The meaning, a great movie. The meaning of life. Or the life of Brian. I guess you could do that, too. Meaning of life is just having a sense of humor, doing what you love, not caring about everyone else's... Can I swear? Yeah, go for it. Not, not caring about anyone else's bullshit or drama, as long as it doesn't involve you. Just sit back, watch, enjoy your life, have a good time. You're going to die. So might as well have the best damn time as you can. Amen to that. It's that simple. It really is. I don't have, you know, everything I'm doing now is awesome. But you know, if I had to work a nine to five, I would have done that or supported a family. But I've been lucky enough that I can get up on stage almost every day, and kick some ass. For me. Hell yeah. Take take what you can, man. Speaking of performing, what's your favorite city to play? that question. <laughs> I love every city. I do, man. Every city is awesome. It's a good play. thing. I mean, there's there's always our hometown. Where, you know, we got our, all of our friends and everything. Can't beat that. But you know, when when you get the get the chance to play out in California, or, you know, even up in Washington, I, Seattle's awesome. As far as the East Coast, I mean, played Nova Scotia. I didn't even know there's a different time zone up there. It's called the Atlantic time zone. Yeah. But all through Canada, it's just I. I don't, I unfortunately, I don't pick favorites, man. I, I love each city as long as they come out and they're there, we're going to come out and be there for them and give them a hell of a show. Someone asked, how can I grow a beard? I want to see you. Oh, that's a Gumby question. <laughs> grow a beard? Um, be a man? <laughs> I mean, I guess you could be a chick and grow a beard, but that, that wouldn't be it very attractive. It does happen. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, dude. Just, I mean, if you have to, go get some Rogaine or something. Just splash it on your neck and your chin and hope for the best. Here's a question you'll probably appreciate. Why are you guys so awesome? We're not awesome. We're not. You're awesome. You guys are awesome. Our fans are awesome. We're awesome because they're awesome. <laughs> that's, that's Can't have one without the other. You can. You know the band Bury the Silence? Yeah. They love and they miss you. Oh. Bury the Silence, Josh, everyone. Oh, I miss my Josh. He's he's my teddy bear. <laughs> no, yeah, Bury the Silence, love those guys. Out in, out in Muskegon, West Coast, great guys. They actually wrote something to you? That's awesome. Yeah? yeah. Miss them, guys. You awesome. need to do a tour. <laughs> get on there. You heard that. Where do you get your influence? Oh. No, no, no. I, I, I thought it was um, well, it is. Do you want me to start from the past or just say like current? I mean, just go for it, man. What are the well, up? started off punk, man. Uh, you, know, I, you know, Matt Freeman, he was one of my favorite on bass players of all time for the longest time. Just punk influence. And then, um, you know, when I started transitioning over into metal, I heard about, you know, Cliff, uh, Geezer Butler, you know, the, uh, Steve Harris. Yeah, just great, solid bassist. And then, uh, you know, just as I started expanding more and listening, say, hey, you know, I think outside the box. So that's when I started hearing more like classical blues, the kind of fusion type stuff from uh, Wooten, uh, Marcus Miller, Stanley Clark. And also listening to Mark King from Level 42. I mean, just you know, Level 42 was a new new wave '80s band, but that guy can slap. Yeah. That guy can play. You know? and I just watched him. I, I want to be. Like, I don't want to play that kind of music, but I want to do what he did for that genre, for metal. Well, you do pretty well, I would say. <laughs> you do all right. Not bad for a white boy. <laughs> Is there anything you want to say to your fans before we wrap up? Our fans, thank you. We love you. Thank you, everybody. You guys are awesome. Please keep coming out. We're going to be there to shred your faces off. We're going to melt your face. So Sounds painful. Better find an extra face. Metal. Thanks, guys. Thank <laughs> you.